Hello, this is Sir Jet and welcome to the last episode of the Rizal Lectures. Today I am here in Calamba City and behind me is what used to be the tallest Rizal statue in the world. It is 22 feet tall to represent the 22 languages that Rizal can speak and it stands on a podium of 15 steps to represent the 15 decades between the time he was born to the time that this statue was unveiled. It was actually unveiled on his 150th birthday. So without further ado, let's now go to our lecture for today. Just like this very tall statue that is very imposing and awesome, today we will talk about the greatness of Jose Rizal to the Filipino people, including us people in the 21st century. How big is he in our lives as a nation and as individual Filipinos? This lecture has two parts. Part one is about looking back, looking back at the past episodes and assessing the worth of result as our national hero. And part two is looking forward. We will answer the question, is result still relevant in the 21st century? Let us begin with part one. Is Rizal really worthy to be national hero? Do you notice that many people put the word GAT in front of Jose Rizal's name, as in GAT Jose Rizal? Why do they do that? What is GAT in the first place? GAT is actually a title given to a well-respected, royal-blooded, ancient Malayan. During the pre-colonial times, our ancestors were ruled by Datus and that royal class bear the title Gat. The Datu is called Datu, he's the chief or the king, but his relatives carry the title Gat, like Gat Pandan, Gat Dula, Gat Chalyan, Gat Maitan. So if you're a Gat, that means you are above the rest. You are extraordinary. You belong to the high class. And when we say Gat Jose Rizal, that means we are giving respect to Rizal. Rizal, with all his talents, fame, and accomplishments, is certainly above the rest of all the Malayans everywhere and all time. Now, for us to comprehend this, we will use an acronym, Gat, G-A-T. G means Galing. Rizal has so many talents. He's so magaling. He's a writer, a doctor, a politician, civic leader, artist, sculptor, songwriter, poet, historian, athlete, teacher, model student, prophet, magician, engineer, architect, land surveyor, linguist, wonder child, and so many more. He's excellent both in the sciences and in the arts. And no Malayan is even close to Rizal when it comes to the enumeration of talents and skills. Who is a great Filipino that you admire so much aside from Rizal? Enumerate his talents. I'm sure Rizal has a longer list of talents compared to the other Filipinos you have in your mind. So certainly Rizal is magaling. Letter A means action. Rizal was an action man. He puts his talents into action. He did not just bury his talents or kept them unused, but he brought them out in so many ways, in so many instances, to make a difference in the lives of the people around him. He has this sense of urgency. He wanted to attend immediately to a need. He didn't waste any time. Every moment counts for him. There's no idle minute in Rizal's life. When he was in the Pitan, he practiced medicine for free. He put up a school so that young people there would not waste their time, but instead would learn many things from him in his school. And when he was traveling, Rizal was always scribbling his pen, writing some poem, letters to friends, travel blogs, and sketches. When he was a student in Spain, he was at the same time a member of some organization that advocated for reforms. Later on, he became a member of the propaganda movement. He wanted to be a part of the solution. When his town mates in Calamba were evicted by the Spaniards because of a land dispute, he went to the governor general in the Philippines and asked if he could start 
a colony or a community in Saba for the Calambenos. He went to Malacanang and met the governor general in person. He was really a man of action. He also started the La Liga Filipina so that he would be able to apply everything he has learned in Europe. So as you can see, Rizal is maaksyon. A means action. T means tapang. Rizal may not have fought in the battlefield, but whatever Rizal did, he did it with all his heart and boldness. He didn't care if he will make enemies because of his writings and speeches. Remember the story of the Gamu Gamu? His mother told him that story when he was a little boy. There was a brave Gamu Gamu who flew very near the fire of the candle and because he was so near, he got burned and he died. Same thing happened to Rizal. He was so brave, he was so matapang, he ran into the brick wall of the Spaniards, got in trouble with them, and he was executed in Luneta because of his boldness. So we can see that Rizal is really matapang. T means tapang. So what is gat? Galing, action, tapang. And you know, no other Filipino hero in our history has that rare combination of gut, galing, action, tapang. Other heroes may have action or tapang only but no galing or they can be magaling but not matapang or they can be magaling but is not an action man but Rizal is a combination of the three. Galing, action, tapang. Rizal may have his own weaknesses, we have seen that in the past episodes, but his outstanding gut outweighs all his flaws. So looking back, we can really see that Rizal deserves to be our national hero. Because among all the heroes, he is complete. He has gut, G-A-T. That's why we call him Gat Jose Rizal. Now let's move over to part two of our lecture. Let's look forward. Let's look at our time, the 21st century. Is Rizal still relevant today? Do we still need heroes? In our culture in our time you know a hero is a universality in culture when you say universality it means something that is present in all cultures and in all periods of history an example of a universality in culture is music all cultures have music you know, Chinese music Korean music American music African music every culture in the world has music also in all historical times there's ancient music there's modern music there's classical music another example of universality in culture is language all cultures have at least one language and Another universality that we will discuss today is heroes. Every culture, every civilization has a hero, whether they be real people or imagined heroes, as in characters in folklore. The ancient Babylonians have Gilgamesh, the Hebrews have Moses and the prophets, the Muslims have Muhammad, the old Chinese have Confucius, the ancient Greeks and Romans have their gods and goddesses, and other legendary characters like Zeus and Cupid. The medieval Englishmen have King Arthur, who is a legendary character. The French have Charlemagne. The Americans have George Washington, their liberator. And the Latinos have Simon Bolivar, who led the war against Spain so that they would be free. And even communist cultures have heroes. Russia has Vladimir Lenin, China has Mao Zedong, Cuba has Fidel Castro, Vietnam has Ho Chi Minh, and North Korea has Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-un. And what is the function of all these heroes that I've mentioned? The hero is the glue that keeps the nation or that culture together. That is the common denominator of the people. Some countries are diverse in terms of people groups. And the hero is someone that the diverse people have something to agree with together. A hero is their source of inspiration and role model. The virtues that the hero carry transcends to the people. The hero represents a certain value or virtue. And the people who look up to the hero would have that value or virtue in them as well as they look up to that hero. The hero gives the culture a sense of identity. If you say, he is my hero, I am associated with that hero. And that what separates a people group from another people group, a nation from another nation. One nation would have a hero and another people group would have a different hero. And thus, when these two people group meet, 
they know that they belong to different nations because their heroes are different people the chinese people would have their own hero the japanese people would have their own hero and these two heroes separate the chinese people from the japanese people and vice versa so heroes as you can see bind a nation together separate from another nation the hero gives that certain nation its sense of identity and uniqueness from other nations therefore if a culture has no hero then it would be a disintegrated culture or not even a united people group thus we all need heroes so if we take away Rizal from Philippine culture we will be disunited we will lose our national identity that's why we still need Rizal in our time every people group in the Philippines recognizes Rizal as hero the Ilocanos consider Rizal a hero he has Ilocano blood by the way the Tagalogs of course because he's from this place the Visayans Rizal can speak their language the people in Mindanao he lived in Dapitan once upon a time in his life and became very dear to him so Luzon Visayas Mindanao look up to Rizal as hero he binds us together as one nation Another reason why Rizal is still relevant in our time is that he is multifaceted. He's a doctor, teacher, student, traveler, writer, leader, and so many other persons that we studied in the previous episodes. And with all this enumeration of who Rizal was, each Filipino can see himself in Rizal. Like if you're a doctor, you can relate to him because he was also a doctor. If you're a teacher like me, you can look up to Rizal also because he was a teacher. He was also a student. If you're a student, you can get lessons from him on how to be an excellent student. If you're an OFW, Rizal was also like you. Most of his life, he was a traveler. He was abroad. If you're a journalist, Rizal is also like you. If you're a leader, a public servant, or a scientist, name it. Every Filipino can relate to Rizal. Each Filipino can see himself in Rizal. Thus, each Filipino can pick life lessons from Rizal that is similar to his profession or situation. So therefore, Rizal can still be very relevant to us Filipinos in the 21st century. Just study his life. What are the problems he faced? How did he solve them? Look at your problems, your situation. Find the common denominator between you and Rizal. And Rizal's life can be of big help to us people here in the 21st century. Thus, the study of Rizal must continue in our schools, in our homes, even now in the modern times. Rizal must live in the hearts and in the memory of the next generation. That's why we have this Rizal course to make this happen. Then we will be better Filipinos individually and be a better united filipino nation looking back and as a conclusion to this lecture and this series we have seen that rizal is indeed a great great man his legacy lives on even up to today in the 21st century and he is very much relevant to each and every filipino i hope this series has transformed you into a better filipino you have learned many things and you have many lessons to apply in real life. Thank you very much. This is Sir Jet signing off.